What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. I wanted to change things up this week and do something a little bit different than the model we created last week. So we're going to be creating a traveler's suitcase. So let's just get started. To start things off, we're going to select the cube and we can start blocking out our main suitcase shape. Now this video is basically just going to be a time-lapse speed modeling video, but like usual, I will jump in here and there to explain a few of the small things I'm doing along the way. Now as you can see, I just started off blocking out one suitcase and my whole idea behind this model was actually just creating one traveler suitcase. So I thought it would just be cool having one half open suitcase and we can throw in a couple objects and items at the front and make it look a little bit worn out and weathered and add some cool stickers all over the suitcase. Now I got this idea from an image I came across on Google and I thought it looked cool. I love the weathered textured look on the suitcase so I just wanted to try to recreate this image. Now I wasn't trying to make it identical, I just was using it as some sort of a guidance. Now my whole idea was to create one suitcase and as you'll see we slowly created a second suitcase and then a third little one on the side. And then finally at the very end I thought we should add in one little tiny keychain on the very front of that bottom suitcase. So throughout the video you'll see I'm just experimenting with different things. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to add into this week's video. So we're just going to kind of wing it along the way and see what we can create in a few hours. So for now, let's just continue blocking these main shapes out and then we can start adding in some details. Oh, and also one quick thing, if you're interested in seeing this video in a real time pace, I will be uploading this full video along with all of the project working files to my Patreon page. And you can find that in the link in the description below. I also just launched my website, polyrender.com. I just have some merch available on there, but it's a really great way to help support the channel. And you can also spread the PolyRender name into the real world. So if you feel like repping a UFO shirt or a PolyRender shirt, you can find all of that in the link in the description below. And we'll also be uploading more merch as we go throughout the year. So keep an eye out for some cool stuff to pop up in there. All right, anyways, let's continue on with this video and let's continue blocking things out.
right, so just like that, we have most of our objects all blocked out. And obviously we're gonna duplicate these objects on this right side to the left. So there's no point in modeling those left objects. We can just reuse the ones we already created. Now next is just jumping into those objects on the inside. Now I didn't wanna spend too much time on these objects. So I just really quickly wanted to mention this. You can obviously spend much more time making some more realistic clothing or different items on the inside. But just because our suitcase is barely open, I don't want to spend too much time because I know most of these are not going to be in view. I don't really want these to be the center focus of this whole render. I really want the main suitcase shape to be the main focus. So these inside objects are just to add some more detail and hopefully to make the whole scene a little bit more interesting to look at. So what we're going to do is very roughly block out some folded clothes. Once again, I'm not focusing on making this very, very realistic. It's just to fill in this empty space. So let's start blocking out some more shapes.
All right, so that's basically everything for all of the 3D modeling. Now we do come back and add a few other objects, but you will see that later on in the video, but for now we're all done. Next up is just jumping on to those UVs. Now I decided to not show the full UV mapping process and the only reason is because we use the exact same tool and process over and over again. We basically just repeat the same steps over and over again. So rather than just dragging out this video a lot longer than it has to be, I just decided to show a small portion of this UV mapping process just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And then once again, we're just gonna skip to the very end of that process and I can show you exactly how I grouped all these objects together and how I just laid out all of those UV shells. Now, if you are interested in seeing the full process at a real-time pace, that will be included in the real-time video that I'm uploading to my Patreon page. So check out that if you're interested and you can find it in the link in the description below. All right, so now let's just move on to those UVs. So we're gonna start off with that main bottom shape of our suitcase, and then we can move on to all the other objects afterwards. I thought this would be a great place to start, not only because it's at the top of our outliner, but just because it's one of the larger objects in our scene. So all I'm gonna do here is a camera based projection just so I can remove all of the cuts on the model, and then using that 3D cut and sew UV tool, I can start adding my cuts wherever I want them. So what I decided to do here was make three separate UV shells for this object. So normally I would do one for the inside and one for the outside, but I didn't want those outside faces to stretch too much. So what I decided to do was make those back faces on the suitcase its own UV shell. That way I can just help those stretches and I don't need to make any other cuts on the outside of my suitcase. The least amount of cuts possible is always better, so that way your textures will hopefully look a little bit smoother and you're not going to see any weird cuts in those materials. Now when it comes to spreading these UV shells in my UV editor, I can make that inner shell, the inside, very small. It doesn't need to take up much space because we're not going to see really any of those inside faces. So it's really good to prioritize your UV shells to whichever is going to be most in view, so you can have some higher resolution on those materials when you jump into substance. So once I'm done that main bottom shape, we're gonna move on to the next one in our outliner, which is the little metal corners. So I do the exact same process here. I do a camera based projection to remove those cuts. I decide to smooth out the objects so I can have some nice smooth lines on the outside. I don't want any choppy edges and it just looks a little bit more realistic since that's the style we're going for. And I'm just gonna make sure it's fitting really nice and snug to my model. And once I'm happy with this shape, I can just duplicate it afterwards to create all the other corners on my suitcase. And one thing I am gonna do here is just one cut along that edge so I can select that inside UV shell and I can just remove it. I don't need all of those inside faces since you're not gonna see any of them. And it's adding a lot of unnecessary polys to my scene. And this is something you should get in the habit of. It's really good to do with all of your UV mapping is just removing any faces that you don't need on your models since it's just unnecessary polys in your scene. Now I repeat the same process for all the other objects in my scene. Now I'm just gonna fast forward a tiny bit to when I was done those UVs and I'm gonna show you exactly how I created the other suitcases. Now here's a model once I was finished all of those UVs. Now like I said, we were originally just gonna create one suitcase, but in our reference photo we were following, I thought it looked cool with another old suitcase right below it. So rather than remodeling a whole other suitcase and doing all of those UVs, we're gonna reuse the exact same one we already created. So what I decided to do here was duplicate all of these objects over and put them in their own group. And then I can just basically close that top lid and start removing other objects just so it doesn't look identical to the one we just created. And then I can slide that suitcase right below this one. And this is the same process I do for the third suitcase that I add later on. I just reuse the same suitcase we just created. I just scale it to look a little bit smaller and I remove some of those metal pieces on it just so it looks a little bit different. But in reality, it's just the same suitcase and we saved ourselves a lot of extra time rather than remodeling it from scratch. Now, one thing you will notice is that front keychain that's hanging off of this lower suitcase is not here and that's just because halfway through my texturing and substance, I thought it'd be cool to add a little object on the bottom just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. So you'll see, we just jump back into Maya really quickly just to model those tiny objects and then I can re-import this into substance and continue the texturing process. And also one important thing to note is the second suitcase, I do add another material to it. That way the materials in the scene are not gonna be identical and it will look like a whole other suitcase. Now when it came time to add that third suitcase, I just had to move some of these UV shells around that way they can fit onto the same UV map. I didn't want to have three separate materials for the three suitcases. I thought for these other two suitcases that we create, they can just share their own UV map. All right, so let's just continue moving on and we can wrap up all of these UVs.
So here's a model in its finished form. Now, like I said, I decided to add that third suitcase on the side and I also added this small keychain. Now this is after we did the texturing, so you'll see as soon as we jump into the texturing process, this whole little keychain on the very bottom is actually not here. And like I said earlier, I just decided halfway through the texturing process just to add one little detail. I thought without this keychain, it looked just a little bit plain on the bottom. I thought we could add something more interesting to look at, and I didn't want to spend too much longer on this model since we already spent a few hours on it. So really quickly, I just decided to add the small keychain. All right, so let's show you how I did those UVs. So if I open up the UV editor here and I click on this first group, this is the first object. So what I decided to do was break this thing up into the suitcase, the outside objects. Since this is our main object in our scene, I wanted to focus on this as our main model. So as you can see, everything is on its own UV map and its own texture for the outside case. And I threw everything, all the inside objects into their own map as well. Now for a lot of these other objects, as you can see, these ones right down here, they're just filling in that empty space. They're taking up barely any room on this UV map just because it's not important. You're not going to see it. And to be honest, we could actually probably delete these objects out of our scene and you wouldn't even notice. However, I thought they would just be important to add since it's not going to be in a video game or anything. So we're not trying to cut back on polys to save on performance. So the other two suitcases, I decided just to add into their own map along with the keys. So these two suitcases and the keys all share one map and I deleted all the inside objects. So this suitcase only has inside objects. Everything below here is just empty as you can see. So like I said, prioritize the larger shells on the outside. So the largest shells in my UV map are clearly these ones. And that's just because they're the main outside faces on my suitcase. Now, it would be important to group these together. There's no point in keeping them separate objects. So to be honest, I should have grouped this into one object and grouped this as well as this. I just decided to keep them separate and the big reason for that is just because I'm throwing this working file up to my Patreon page and I find it's easier for people to follow along and really see exactly what I'm doing if they're all separate into their own groups just like how I do it here in this video. So that is exactly how I did those UVs and now we can jump into Substance Painter and we can start texturing. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can load in our FBX file from Maya. Now everything here is just the same as every video, but one little setting that we're gonna do before we bake out those textures is change our ambient occlusion map just from self occlusion from always to only by mesh name. And that's just because we're reusing the same suitcases in our scene. And because I deleted those metal objects from some of those suitcases, you're going to see that ambient occlusion shadow effect on those objects. And just to make it easier to look at while you're adding these materials, you should just change your self occlusion. That way it's not going to show that shadow effect. All right, so I won't be talking through the whole texturing process. It's just going to be a time lapse video, but I will jump in at a few different places just to explain a few of the small things I'm doing. So as you can see, I'm just starting off with that main suitcase shape. I'm not going to stress about getting everything perfect right off the bat. I really find that can drag out the whole texturing process. So I'm just going to focus on filling in all of these empty meshes with the materials. And then we can come back afterwards and start adjusting those values and tweaking those settings to make them look a little bit more accurate to what I had in mind. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, when it came to the whole texturing process of this suitcase, it definitely took me longer than I planned. I was really torn with how I wanted this object to look. I was just following that reference photo we used earlier, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to copy those materials exactly or if I wanted it to look a little bit more clean. It was just really bugging me, and it definitely stretched out this whole texturing process longer than I originally planned it to. And you'll actually see throughout this texturing process, I definitely spend a little bit of time adjusting colors and jumping back and forth between things just because I didn't really know exactly how I wanted it to look. And that's something I just wanted to make a note of. If you really plan out these objects ahead of time before you just dive into them, you can definitely save a lot of time on the whole process creating these assets. For example, in this case, I really didn't know how I wanted the suitcase to look. So I had to experiment a bit more with different things and it just dragged on the whole process and made things a little bit longer. That being said, I'm still happy with how things turned out. I feel like there's a few extra objects we could have added in to make it look a bit more interesting, but 
Like I said, I didn't wanna spend more than one day sitting here and working on it. We just wanted to create something in a few hours. Anyways, that's enough of me talking and dragging this on. Let's just continue this texturing process. Let's fill in these empty meshes with materials and we can texture our suitcases.
Alright, so things were looking good and we were just about to wrap up this model but as I stared at this render I noticed how it was looking a little bit plain on the bottom. Now this is just typical me to never know when to quit so I thought we could add in a tiny little object to hopefully make it look more interesting to look at. So I thought at the very front where that handle is we can add a small little keychain that was hanging off of it. Something just to unlock all of these suitcases since there's a bunch of locks and we have no keys in our scene so I thought it would just be a fun little thing to add. So really quickly jumping back into Maya, I'm going to start blocking out those shapes and we can quickly model a tiny keychain. So we're just really quickly going to block these shapes out. I can quickly UV it and rather than adding a whole other material to our scene, I'm just going to squish these UV shells into our already created texture that's on our second suitcase. That way I can just keep two materials on this object. So let's just really quickly block these shapes out. We can re-import it into our substance scene and then we can texture our keychain and wrap up this model.
Alright, and just like that, our model is finished. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to see more weekly 3D content. Also, if you're interested in seeing this video in a real time pace, as well as having access to the full UV mapping process, that video will be uploaded to my Patreon page, which you can find in the link in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out my website, polyrender.com. I have some really cool merch available on there and it's a really great way to help support this channel if you like what I'm doing and you wanna wear some cool UFO or polyrender clothes in the real world. And you also get 10% off of your very first order, so don't forget to use the discount code FIRSTTIME at checkout and you can get that 10% off. Anyways, thank you all for the continuous support and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to see more weekly 3D content. Thank you all once again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.